from the audience. So if you have any question to ask the guest speaker, you can come out of the audience to my front here so that you can ask your questions. As you are making your way to the, to the front of where you are, I need to also inform you that our online audience to have opportunity to ask their question. So if you have any question for the guest speaker, quickly make your way to the front of the place where you are seated so that the technical crew can give you a mic to ask your question. Anybody? Can you show by raising your hand? Step out and ask your question. God bless you. All those who are listening online, you also have the opportunity to ask your question. Kindly write them out. Our technical crew will uh, harvest the questions, and then you have also get answer for Victor Chuko, the guest uh, speaker. Yes, can I have the person in wine top? Wine top, yes. Okay, um, good evening, sir. Um, my question is this. Um, concerning the seven steps in building a reputable brand, it said something about be clean in your records and results and also your relationships. Now, and when he was explaining that, he said, we should always be, okay, wait. Then he said, we should be credible, sorry. We should be credible, we should be authentic and real. Now, in a world of cyber security, so many information, is it very ideal we keeping our informations out? It's not about we lying about what we keep online. But is it really ideal we keeping out our informations, everything about ourselves here to be truthful, knowing full well that as we have good followers, we also have bad followers who follow our pages online and the likes. Is it very ideal we been keeping real everything out about ourselves? It's about the things we keep online. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let me tell the other that when you have want to ask your question, kindly go straight to your question because of time. Can I have the lady, the only lady there to ask? And then uh, we'll take one more person and we'll have Victor to answer our question. Yes, the young lady, please. My question still is on being credible. You talked about being real and being yourself. I want to ask, you see um, maybe, okay, according to your own line of, um, of, let me say, of professionalism, you see someone else's work that you like, but you're not the one that do the work. Now, can you use that person's work Maybe you don't have the you don't have the opportunity of contacting the person that okay, I want to use your work as an advertisement. Do it. It's what you can do. You only want to use it as an advertisement. Can you use the person's work to advertise your own business? Thank you. Can I have the young man in white? Then we'll return to Victor to provide answers to this. Please go straight to your question. Good evening, sir. Um, my question has to do with uh, personal rebranding. Um, I want to ask concerning young people. After you have um, credited yourself, you want to be rebranded, and uh, you take away yourself from this state of mediocrity. And you discover that along the line in life, maybe you're looking for a help um, rebranded through someone, and you cannot find the help. And one of these things that I want to come out for mediocrity to come to a, an incre a credible situation in life or a state in life. So when state has not come to take place in the life of youth, uh, and that youth is still maintaining that kind of fear of major, what, is, what can one do about it, sir? Thank you very much. Victor, over to you. Can you be real? And out to what extent can you be real? The thing is, being real is about looking inwards. We are all born with, we are all born uniquely. In fact, our fingerprint, there is no other person that has your fingerprint. So that is how unique you are. We have, but with unique fingerprints. So what you want to think, 
Curtis. Look inwards. What do I have that can help me brand myself well? Do I have potential? And yes, you have. You just need to look inwards. Look at you. How am I unique from my siblings, even? From my friends? How am I unique for, from... What is that thing that can make me stand differently? And when you figure out that, you use that as your picture. You bring that out. You find it. You stir up that part of your... Come out unique. Now, coming out real doesn't everything out there. No. You put those things there that can give you a reputable brand. Remember what? Bring out all your records, even the ones that are bad. Record, clean up the bad records and only project those things that can take you to the next level. The second question about using other people's work over here is a very big deal. If you use other people's work, um, putting their names on it, so I will not advise you to do that. Yeah, we can use other people's work, but make sure you acknowledge them. We see that a lot on Facebook, and I see a lot of people complaining. Somebody copied. I will mention my name. Somebody copied my picture. And yeah, that is not very good. Let them know you as people, as you build your personal brand. You can use other people's work, but make sure you mention their name, acknowledge them. In fact, you can put their name first before you start um, showing the work. And you have the right to embellish anybody's work. Even as we write papers, those in can copy and um, um, do research, but you must name of the original author or the one that did the work. The last question, and I will give other people, I have other presenters online that um, answer the questions. I'm um, talking about mediocrity. You have to look for somebody in your field you can look up to. Well, we call it like a mentor. And you can do that. That is where you, uh, you need hard work, your personal work. Look around you in the church, in the society. What, what do you want to be like? And who around you or who in the society or in the church has gone there or achieved that? Then you will use that person as your mark of standard, as your standard of excellence. And like I said, read books. Um, what videos that can help you? Go to other people's portfolio. Now we have a lot of materials online. So that can help you to know what the standard of excellence is. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Now we go online. Now we go to take more questions. Thereafter, is go will help us in addressing those questions. Online questions now. A couple of we begin with some we have uh, there. The YouTube. This one is from Praise Baturi. He says, "How do you stop peer pressure from changing your personal brand?" Another one, all the way from Ghana. His name is Elvis. He says, please, how can I be Christ-centered? And this one from Theresa Abutu says, how can you too much and talking right, mainly on social media? We have a lot of questions. We'll take a few of them. This one from Duoma. Um, okay. Facebook, a couple of questions rolling in. This one from Olusha John Kende. How do we build a personal work brand? Also responsible to use our social media handles for church publicities and regular events. And um, this one says copying them credits is called plagiarism. I guess that's just a comment. This one says my um, our posts on social media. Can you delete all your posts you ever made, good or bad posts? He's asking because he says that there are regrets for young, some young people some for young things, people, they've done, things they've thus done in the past. Thus These are the few we can past. take the for time's sake take now. For time Thank, sake you. now. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll turn over, and I'll turn over the mic to Dr. Sam Jolayemi and Mr. Omolayo Adebayo to provide answers to this question one after the other. Thank you. What? <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. 
Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Praise the Lord. My name is Sam Jola Yemi. I'm based in Brisbane and Melbourne in, um, in Australia. I'm a child, adolescent, and family psychiatrist. I thank um, Dr. Victor Chuku for the great job he has done, and I praise the Lord for the good work that he's doing through him and others like him in the church and globally. The, I couldn't hear quite a few of the questions that were being read out, but I caught enough for me to realize that moderation, what of God suggests, is always a good guide. Be moderate. Let your moderation be known to everybody, everybody online, in life, in everything we do. We're talking about putting ourselves out there as young people, even though we know there the, is a jungle out there and the social media platforms have already an outlet for a lot of people in the world with abnormal personality and dangerous intentions. A lot of people who have lost their life and have been, they've been seriously hurt by their activities on the internet. We are aware of this. And we as children of God, we should not be naive. It's a very key thing. Now, other parts of the question that I was able to catch include your integrity. You know, you cannot sell what you do not have. If you do not have integrity, it is other people. It means that you yourself must have a stable personality and a stable emotional development. Looking at people, lots of things are happening in their lives. Many things that influence our personality development, including your genetic inheritance and your early exposure to environmental factors. Unfortunately, nobody has any power to control the appearance or even the environmental impact that has affected their emotional and personality development. One thing I see that is defining and is influencing people's development today is the amount of trauma that young people go through all over the world. parental discord, a lot of fights at home, separation, chronic tension, and dysfunctional home background that leads to children not having the optimal environment to develop and thereby leading to all sorts of problems. And we see a rise in the suicide rate of youth, depression, unhappiness, and a lot of unholy influences from so-called influencers and other people in their lives. In other parts of the country, where even when the family values are still being respected, the rate of divorce is not as great, but these places are right of poverty and the country associated with it, religious as well as political repression. I mean, imagine what is going on in Afghanistan now. How is the youth there? How are they coping? What about Yemen? What about Eastern Ukraine? Some parts of Northern Nigeria, and so on and so forth. And there are young people growing up in that place. And it's not as if it's that easy in, 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 in itself. I mean, we know the task that children need to go through in adolescence in order to, to, to go through and become viable adults. Hormonal changes, psychosocial changes, expansion of your mind. Suddenly you realize sometimes that your parents are not always right and they don't know everything. And you become so smart, maybe as smart as your parents, if not smarter. But the wisdom might not be there to handle this issue. So this leads to a lot of conflict with parents, figures, and with good and bad consequences. But young people still have to go through those phases to go through the phase we call individuation in order to become independent and productive adults. The 
uh, an extension or like, 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 like an extension of their parents, their mom, or their dad. All these impact on the stability of the young people and the, and the solidity by which they can project themselves into the future as good people. But as children of God, we have Christ as our model. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And I believe that if we study the word of God, and if you have not been doing that, you need to go back to the word of God and start I look at the life of somebody like Daniel and that of King Solomon. And I see a lot of life experiences. The intention that King Solomon has in his head, when God gave him a blank check, he said, my son, Solomon, your dad was my friend. And here I am, I promise him that I will look after you. Tell me your son, what can I do for you? And you see how God was so taken aback and impressed by him. Because he did not ask for his own personal gain. I can imagine what I will ask for, what many of us will ask for here, seeking all these rich things, you know. But Solomon just asked for wisdom to administer God's people. He has that plain and in his heart that was so impressed that God that he then gave him everything. This is a life that is worthy of emulation, and I pray that our own youth will go into the world with a clean heart, with a clean purpose. Because remember, if you don't have integrity and the intention for the greater good, you will present yourself as not being better than a con man. And all these influencers all over the world, they are there for a game to gain wealth and power. Is that what you are there for? So remember that. And what is your aim? You want to influence people to come to Christ. You must be able to demonstrate that Christ-like life and the integrity that goes with it, the consistency that goes with it as Dr. Victor has emphasized. And I pray that as you do that, the Lord God will protect you and will make your um, impactful in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I thought you all our guest speakers. What we have seen tonight is just a tip, a tip of the iceberg of what still remain ahead of this. The Lord Almighty for us to make all these things part of our lives so that God's purpose will be fulfilled in every life in the name of Jesus Christ. I hand over to uh, the online from the nations.